Did you know that YouTube has free movies? I'm not talking about movies that YouTubers have made and just uploaded. I mean like official movies that had some sort of distribution and budget that you can watch completely for free. There's about 400 movies and all of them suck. Okay, obviously I haven't seen all of them. In fact, I haven't seen any of them, but here, you tell me. Do you see a single classic in this list? No, I can't. I thought I did, right there. I was bored, it was about 2 a.m., and I thought this was Armageddon, the 1998 classic starring Bruce Willie and uh, Adam Smith. <laughs> Instead, I rubbed my eyes and realized that no, this was not Armageddon, but the 2015 masterpiece. This is the actual title screen of the movie. Is that fucking Helvetica? Usually in other movie reviews, one would start with the story or something. Moving to targeting mode. Oh my god, that guy looks scary as shit. I'm not gonna do that here because I have to talk about this. The visual effects in this movie are horrible. There's a missile head right towards us. Oh shit. do better than you could do better than this just to remind you this film came out in 2015 the same year as <laughs> they also keep using this horrible warp transition effect oh my god yes holy shit this, this film was directed by nick lyon leon leone leon nick and unfortunately, I couldn't find any information on a budget for Stormageddon. But I did find a Rotten Tomatoes list of all the other films that Nick has worked on. And oh my god. This guy's been directing and writing films before I was fucking born. And to have a release this bad, this late in his career, is baffling. Some of his previous works include Bullet, Punk Love, Zombie Apocalypse, Bermuda Tentacles, and Earth Tastrophe. <laughs> So clearly his films are just soulless cash grabs with no semblance of any artistic value. I mean, he directed three movies in 2015, 2016, and 2017. Either he's the richest, most hardworking, most unself-aware filmmaker on planet Earth, or he doesn't give a fuck. My bet's on the latter. I waited this long to talk about the story because I didn't know what the fucking story was until like halfway through the movie. Just like how long we've been in this video. This, this it's, the, it's thematic. Well, it's actually really simple. Here's the plot summary on IMDb. When a computer program, Echelon, takes over America's computer systems, it gains the potential to manipulate the weather. Simple, right? Here's how it plays out in the film. <laughs> That's just gonna happen. Okay, let me, let me break that down for you. Meet Molly. She works for the FBI or she's a journalist or something. She's with her friends, Carrie and discount Patton Oswalt. And they're on a mission to- Oh shit, do you, do you guys, do you guys hear that? Looks like my bad writing detector is going off. It detect- Oh, sorry, this is the wrong. This is my bad writing detector. It goes off when it detects bad writing. Let's see what it detected. Look at that. Bad writing. So Molly's friend, Carrie, they have a discussion about online dating and how Molly should get on that hustle. But Molly's like, are you fucking serious? There was just a terrorist cyber attack on the US that killed like 2000 people, which is actually a very valid response. By the way, that's what the intro scene was. That was a, that was a terrorist attack. Anyways, I thought this would be a setup for something later. Maybe she does find love, but that would make too much sense. So then I thought, oh, it's probably a character thing. They're like setting up the fact that she's a powerful independent female who doesn't need no XY chromosome. But later on when she meets the male lead in this film, we'll get to him later, he sucks too. She is completely dependent on him the entire time. In fact, half of this film is just her getting and pulled around by this dude. Come on, we gotta move. Hey, I'm going. Go! Keep moving. Get up the stairs. Go, go! We gotta go. Come on. Go, go! Upstairs? I feel like the writer wrote this entire movie, realized he accidentally made the protagonist useless, and phoned in this bullshit conversation to try to fix it. You can't do that. That's how you write a good character. You can't just tell me one thing and then show me another. If you want your movie to be led by a good female character, you have to take the time to write a good female character. Who wrote this film anyway? Oh, I should've known. Anyways, I'm just gonna mute this bad writing detector because, uh, I have a feeling it'll just keep going off. Back to the intro scene. This is a cyber attack that sparks the whole story, caused by the evil computer program Echelon. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be New York City. It's said that thousands of people were killed in this attack, but almost none of the other characters actually give a shit. There's never any scenes of people grieving, or being sad, or remotely showing any emotion. It just seems like another normal Tuesday. I mean, remember how it was after 9-11? Okay, okay, hear me out. Just, just let me explain. I personally do not remember 9-11. I was about negative 1.002 years old. But from all the historical articles I've read and stories I've heard, it was a real turning point in American culture. Compare that with this.
White House. The White House. Why am I even talking about this point? Clearly nobody on the production team even gave any thought into this. My more important point is that the disaster part of this disaster movie, aka the Stormageddon, it feels like extremely disconnected from the rest of the film. Out of nowhere at the end of scenes, it'll just cut randomly to the middle of the ocean or fucking space to advance the disaster part of the film. Also, there's this random tiny side plot that exists completely as filler. There's these people on a submarine and they get gassed and then the evil AI launches a nuke from the submarine so it can power up the uh, storm. I'm getting this out of the way now because it's stupid and I don't want to talk about it and I hate this movie. Meanwhile... Molly gets delivered a VHS tape, which turns out to be from her dead father. Dun dun dun. I haven't used one of these things in like 15 years. Haha, <laughs> isn't that a classic line? Look everybody, it's just a really old thing that nobody uses anymore. But we're gonna use it in anyway. What the fucking do if I hear that joke one more time in a movie, I'm gonna- <laughs> This is a squeaky toy by the way. I bought it in Japan. I didn't know it was squeaky when I bought it. I just wanted a sword to play with. Imagine fighting somebody and then they come up to you with this thing. Like they probably win. I'd be so caught off guard. You guys pose up and then you hear- Fuck are we talking about again? I'll write this damn movie. Before all that happened, there was a scene at a high school football field. These two government guys find the bald guy from the beginning of the movie. This guy is the bad guy, but these two are also bad guys, but they just want to also kill the first bad guy. Also, this bad guy has a clone. So this bad guy shoots bald bad guy. Oh, shit. <laughs> Look, this guy just confused the shit. Black bad guy, who actually turns out to be a good black guy later on, is like, no, bro, we were supposed to bring him in. And white bad guy, not this white bad guy, this bad guy is bald bad guy, remember that. Anyways, white bad guy says, orders have changed. And then they leave. You guys just gonna leave him there? I'm just gonna... Oh, what if there's school tomorrow? Some, some poor kid's gonna come up there and find a fucking bot. <laughs> You're just gonna fuck it. Of course and unfortunately that doesn't happen because bald bad guy is actually a robot who was built by good girl's dad. Also his clone is a robot too. It's actually really simple. We cut to the secret government building. Sorbin? Sounds like a racial slur. Uh, we need to talk about this. This is an unknown location. It's a huge building near other huge buildings, near 50 million fucking cars passing by, palm trees, the ocean, scary character models. Motherfucker, this is Vice City. Anyways, we cut inside and here are the worst animated bees I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my God. Also, the bugs are in LA as well. And then they killed Drew Carey and the other girl and everybody else in this building. Also, we're only 17 minutes into this movie. Meanwhile, remember this office where everyone was killed? I just showed it like six seconds ago. Well, everyone was killed except for our good friend Molly. She was literally the only one from the office who isn't dead because she was out. Uh... Now, all the government people and all the black suits are after her because they think she's a suspect or something. Like, she somehow managed to kill everyone in the office, then leave. Now, this guy, uh, Adam, he comes over to Molly's apartment and saves her and fights off the government guys. Also, he's a robot human fusion was also built by her dad. No time to explain. They narrowly escape, but are still being closely pursued by the government bad guys and the bald bad guy. Also, this escape sequence is pure gold. We gotta get off this building. I don't want to be mean, but the main actress who plays Molly, she's, she, she sucks. Half the time, I really can't understand what she's saying. No, it's not like she has much to work with. Almost all of her dialogue is just questions. You gotta have to tell me where we're going. Where are we going? Where are we running from? What's that noise? What are you doing? What are we doing? What is that? Who is it? What language is that? How does it help us? When is this dangerous project? How could it have been dangerous? What does any of this have to do with me? I mean, can't we just go to the government? I mean, it's our government. What is that? What happened to my building? What's going on? I could ask more questions. I don't think she says a single statement in this entire film. What are you? What are you? Calm down, just listen. Listen, I'm done asking stupid questions. Though it's not like Adam's any good either. I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. What? What was that? I need to know how you knew how to contact me. We knew that what we were working on was dangerous. I was a ghost in the machine, not a computer, a program. 
hi there welcome back again I'm MG in this video I will show you how to fix program not opening in Windows 10 every line he says is just way too over dramatic after Hiroshima he knew that nuclear weapons would paralyze the world into a stalemate but the next big weapon would be information he wanted to make sure that we were prepared to be the usher. there's a scene after their first escape where they have a conversation in the car it's horrible there's almost no chemistry between them she's just fucking asking annoying questions and he's like there's no time to explain follow me lady run away from the CGI bees <laughs> They're supposed to be siblings, by the way. Trust me, you don't care. So thank Allah there's no romance plot between them. Obviously, I can't be sure 100% that it's the actors slash actresses' fault or the directors. Just got word that we have agents apprehending one of the fugitives now. And those agents are dead, sir. Okay, I can infer, but not everybody in this movie is terrible. I can see the bad bald guy being really good in a real movie. Also, there's this really nerdy kid they meet later on in the library. He's great. This is some weather control stuff. I'm telling you, this is high-tech, black-budget military stuff being used against us. Lasers, nanobots. For every three satellites we send into space, we only know what one does. In fact, these two characters are practically identical, but I still love them. Yeah. Looks real important to me, guys. This can't be it. Well, maybe you haven't given peace a chance. Okay, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Okay, just a phone. Please don't kill me. Oh, shit. What was that? Hey. Oh. Stay here. Oh, my. That was awesome. Oh. oh, shit. Recover. Recover. I'm not going to tell you I was right, but I mean, oh, God, this is awesome. Oh, yes. Too bad he dies in the next scene. <laughs> no. What the hell was that for? Yo, what the fuck, man? <laughs> this is the best character in the whole movie. You know, enough of this damn story. Let's, let's just get to the... You guys are never gonna believe this, but uh, the cinematography sucks monkey butt too. The lighting is okay, it's passable. It has that really generic, edgy action sci fi feel. It actually reminds me a lot of that Supergirl trailer. <laughs> Though, my biggest gripe comes from the camera work. Oh my god, stop, stop shaking the camera! Where this really falls apart is during the action scenes. I hate it when movies do this. It doesn't make it more intense. What the fuck is going on? Why did it zoom in? Is this in the fucking office? Did Michael J. Fox film this? All right, you know what? This, this video isn't intense enough. Is this movie intense enough yet? Okay, I literally have no idea where it went. This is not how this bit was supposed to end. It was supposed to shatter and it would be funny, but it bounced and it disappeared. Welcome to the Toxic Easy, the Toxic Easy production studio where we lose our props. All right, okay, look, ignore the mess over here. Here's today's quick lesson in filmmaking. Today's lesson is the 180 degree rule. Well, technically it's not really a rule, it's more of a set of guidelines, but I'll explain, you'll see. All right, give me a second. All right, for forgive the crude drawings, I, I failed art. So right here, this is a top-down view. So right over here, this is character A, this is character B, they're in a conversation. And that line they form as they face each other there, that is called the 180 degree line. Remember again, this is top-down view, so this is camera. So that's the camera right there, that's shot one, it's close of a character A. Once character A stops talking traditionally, the next shot would cut to character B. But where should the camera be? Since the camera started on this side of the line, traditionally the next shot would have the camera be set up. Boom, right there, movie magic, I just did a cut. That's shot two, right there, that's where they would put the camera. So that means both the characters are always facing the same direction when it's set up with the camera. Okay, this is kind of confusing, so here's a real life example. Oh my god, you're me! Yes, I am you from another universe? No, the future, dipshit. Oh. Uh, I am here to warn me. No, shut the f. Stop interrupting me. Sorry. I am here to shoot your nuts off. Wh what? I am going to blast your nuts off. What the fuck kind of stupid plot point is that? Hands up, n Dude, what the fuck? You can't say that? I am from the future. Racism is no more. I can say whatever I want. You f Please don't kill me. We have so much to live for. Say adios to your huevos. Wait, what What just happened? Sayonara to your tamago. No, wait, stop, stop. I'm so confused. What, what's happening? Au revoir to your hordes de vores. Which, which way are you facing? <laughs> so you guys see what happened there? At the beginning of this scene, normal Andrew was always facing the right, and future Andrew was always facing toward the left. Halfway through, it switched, which can be extremely disorienting and confusing. Now, the 180 degree rule is more of a guideline rather than actual rules. <laughs> There are many, many examples of films breaking this rule for great effect. Some films even ignore it entirely, such as... But remember one thing. This movie sucks. 
So of course it doesn't make sense. Are you fucking kidding me? You want me to talk about the music? Uh, none of it was memorable. Remember the title screen? There's actually no music playing there. I added my own music. And by my own music, I mean my good friend Jerry Actorman. Go check him out on his YouTube channel. He makes, some good, he makes some good stuff. He's good at playing the piano. In fact, the budget was probably so low for this film that I wouldn't be surprised if they got it all from some royalty-free stock website. I'd rather listen to the whole YouTube audio library. Like, uh, how about we take a look at Cherokee Shuffle by Nat Keefe and the Hot Buttered Rum? <laughs> what? Oh, okay, okay, that's enough of Okay, I'll give you all one guess on how bad the editing in this movie is. Okay, time's up. The editing's great for all of its flaws. The editing is actually a breath of fresh air that paces the story and I'm fucking with you. The editing is horrendous. What? What just happened? Okay, here, I'm gonna show you a scene and you tell me if you can figure out what's happening. I promise you it's very simple. It's not an action scene. Nothing crazy complicated is happening. Do you hear? Here it is. It's not a trick. It's not what he's saying. It's what he's not saying. Oh my god, what the fuck was that editing? I don't know about all of you, but that gave me a goddamn headache. So here's what happened. Our two main bozos are looking at a computer screen, viewing the VHS video from earlier, but they're zooming into it, trying to find clues. That's it. But look at the way it's edited. Oh my god. They can just show the computer screen and do a zoom? Like, look here. Zoom. 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 All I had to do is take the VHS video, digitally zoom it in a couple times, Photoshop it in there, and play it back in one shot. Instead, they have 14 fucking shots coming back and forth, they cross the axis line seven times, the cameraman has Parkinson's, the actors can't speak English, I'm having a stroke, and the royalty ran me up the free ass stock music. <laughs> So the bad black guy actually kills the white bad guy and turns into a good black guy, but then he also gets killed and the movie completely forgets about him. Oh, by the way, they're on an oil rig where there's this machine that they have to plug Adam into. Also, this guy's here. I actually really don't remember who this is, but he's dead, so who cares? Uh, um, okay, and then they kill bald bad guy too. There's nothing natural about you! And it's the most boring fight scene ever. And they plug Adam in, and this is this is this is literally how the movie ends. What? That's the end. It's better not be a clip in the room. Alright everybody, so I hope you enjoyed the video. As you can see, just like the last video, uh, this is a different video from what I would usually do. I'm gonna do more of these commentary style videos from now on. I also said this in the description of my last video. It's gonna be very hard for me to vlog if I can't see any of my friends or go outside. And nobody wants to watch me sit in the fucking room and twiddle my- But yeah, I think I'm gonna do more of these criticism commentary style videos. I have a bunch of topics lined up. And if you have any like suggestions for me on things I could cover, leave them in the comments below. So yeah, I'm gonna be focusing most of my time on my YouTube channel so I don't go insane. I have something to work on. I had some films I was in the process of making before this whole quarantine shutdown happened. And it kind of sucks that those had to be canceled, but I guess this is an okay enough substitute for me. It's better than nothing. Oh yeah, I'm hitting a thousand subscribers soon, which is fucking insane. So I might be doing something special with that. I'm thinking about doing a Q&A maybe, some other stuff in there. Leave a question down below with the hashtag, hashtag uh, the Toxiki Productions production um, Q&A 1000, 1000 million billion subscriber question hashtag. And then I'll, I'll probably see it. Also there's 400 of these free YouTube movies. So maybe I can make like a series about this, but I really can't think of a title. YouTube free, YouTube P. <laughs> hit the subscribe button if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, watch some of my older commentary videos. Uh, hit the like button, because I hear that's important these days. Uh, hit the bell. God, there's like fucking 15 million things you gotta do now. So yeah, that's the end of my ramble. Uh, check out my friend Jerry's music. His YouTube channel is just his full name. Jerry Octorman. 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 Octorman.